Welcome everyone, my name is Alain Legault and I'm VP IP Product at Harden Montreal. Today I will introduce you to the video compression standards that are part of the MIPI DSi 2 specification. First, let's take a look at display bandwidth usage for consumer electronic product. This uh, logarithmic chart maps out the evolution of display bandwidth over time for various types of products that use display technology, such as mobile, tablet, automotive application, and AR, VR. When you compare this to the evolution of phi speed over the same period of time, what you can quickly observe is that the phi speed is increasing by approximately 20% per year, whereas display bandwidth has increased twice as fast at 40% per year, which created a clear gap between the two. So there is not too many ways you can deal with this challenge. You can either increase the number of transmission lane in your design, or you can lower the display bandwidth by adding compression. So VESA, the Video Electronics Standard Association, recognized this need for an industry-wide video compression specification and standard that could bridge that gap. So the first VESA video compression standard, VESA DSC, was released in 2015. The MIPI Alliance was the first organization to adopt the use of DSC inside its transport standard, MIPI DSI. DSC has been widely adopted over the last six years. It is now commonly used in many consumer products. As display bandwidth requirement kept increasing, VISA identified a need for a second compression standard that would offer additional compression capability, and VDCM was announced in 2018. Again, the MIPI Alliance was the first organization to adopt VDCM in MIPI DSi 2. We expect that DSC will coexist with VDCM for the several years to come. Since early 2021, you can find now VDCM in some IN application processor products, the one that will require an additional level of compression to deal with the ever-increasing extra display bandwidth. The VISA DSC and VDCM compression codec have a lot to share in common. First, they are both visually lossless codec. That means that the end user cannot distinguish between the uncompressed original images and the compressed version. This has been proven through a series of rigorous tests conducted by VISA. Secondly, they have both been designed to have super small latency in the order of a microsecond, which is key in several market areas. Finally, because of the wide range of application where the codec are used, the algorithm have been carefully designed to yield excellent picture quality for all type of content. Natural images, text, graphic, even complex uh, engineering test pattern. So then you may ask yourself, between DSC and VDCM, which one should I choose for my application then? So essentially, choosing between DSC and VDCM for your application depends on the interoperability requirement you have, and also the trade-off between compression capability and complexity. VDCM provides additional compression capability for the same or better picture quality as DSC. DSC compress compression allow you to target, say, a compression factor of up to about 3 to 3.75x, whereas VDCM can let you aim at 5 or even 6x compression. However, the VDCM codec is larger in terms of gate count and RAM usage due to the more complex algorithm that it incorporates. The latency remains the same for both codecs, essentially. Basically, to summarize, you should use VDCM for applications that target very high display bandwidth and DSC for other applications. So there are many benefits to using compression, in, and it depends on your application. In the case of mobile and mobile influence product like AR VR, we see market trends like the following: foldable display, multiple displays, 
ultra high display resolution pixel density, the shift from 8 to 10 bit video for HDR, the increase in frame rate to 120 frames per second. So clearly there are benefits to use compression. You can lower your power consumption, uh, find a smaller footprint, uh, lowering your cost, the number of pins, and lowering the switching frequency inside your design. In the case of a car application, there's a clear increase in the number of display inside car these days. So car makers are very sensitive to the cost and the weight of their cable harness, and they will see compelling advantages for using compression to reduce number of cables inside their car. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us.